lovely to be here. So my name is Nora Keldy. I'm actually an alumni, uh, a Trinity alumni, so I'm super happy to be here. Um, before I start, I, I just want to give you a little story. When I first came to uh, Trinity um, for my interview, for my PhD, so I used to, I, I was living in France then, and I came over, I had a, I had a few interviews around Europe, and Trinity was the first one. And it was with a lab called um, the Ken Wolf's Lab uh, in the genetics department. So I came over for the interview, and the minute I walked through Trinity, I just fell in love. And I fell in love with Trinity, and I fell in love with the lab. Um, and I remember going home and saying to myself, you know what, um, I'm going to cancel all my other interviews, because whether the answer is yes or no, I don't care, I'll be back here, I want to work here. Um, and literally I went home and cancelled all my other interviews that hadn't gotten a yes then, because you have to wait a few days from the interview to the yes. But then I was very fortunate because the email came in and it was a yes. Um, and I started the journey of my PhD and I remember my boss telling me at that time, he said to me, um, you know, Nora, you'll be the only girl in the lab. Um, it is an area called bioinformatics, which is computer science applied to biology, uh, and also molecular evolution. So it was very, very theoretical. Um, I, I, you know, I dabbed in the blonde uh, phase as well, as you can see in the picture. But, um, but it was an extraordinary, um, an extraordinary uh, journey that I had. Um, and then the funny story as well is that we were the only lab uh, in the world on top of a pub. So this really got a lot of attention, especially from the Americans. We literally had a door right into the pub. Now, it was blocked, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> so we couldn't go down straight. But Kennedy's was literally our local as well. So it was a great, um, a, a great lab, um, a, a great, uh, great learning. And I'll tell you a little bit more about it. Um, after Trinity, um, I went after um, a lot of different areas, specifically uh, drug discovery. And I created a company called Neurotas. And we're actually just a, a couple of hundred meters from Trinity, so, uh, which is really interesting. So I never really um, uh, went that far from Trinity. And um, we started small, as you can see here, and then we went bigger. So we're about 60 people now. We're based on Dawson Street. We're a biotech company. Um, and what we do, just to give you a little bit of background, is that when I first started working in this field, uh, from my PhD into my postdoc and then working with the US, Ireland and the US, I realized that there was a very big issue in the industry. The industry of creating drugs was taking too long. It takes about 15 to 20 years. The cost is gigantic, about 2.5 billion to create a drug. And when I started analyzing the reasons behind that, is it normal, is that the cost and we just accept the norm? or can we change it? I realize that the issues are enormous. Um, it, it literally is random testing. So you, you, you try and find something that works. You try and find a molecule that shows you what you want to see. But then as you develop the drug, you realize that it's maybe not stable, that it's not safe, and then you have to start again. And you go for years and you start again. And that's super expensive. So coming from my own background, a data perspective background, because my background is pure mathematics and computational, biology, the question was, can we actually um, you know, solve this? Can we implement computer programs that can actually look at a drug at the very beginning and see whether it has the capability of being stable, of being safe, of being uh, scalable, and all those different issues as you grow and you dev develop a drug. But doing that at the very beginning on computers before you actually venture into the lab, because labs are very, very expensive. And that's really what we've done. So we've brought together at Neurotas three different technologies, proteomics or peptidomics in this specific area, machine learning, uh, and, and life science in general, lab testing. We have um, um, great labs in the city center. And we brought those things together to address that issue of drug development. Drugs take too long. How can we actually create drugs faster? But then what's interesting coming to this talk was, OK, what drove me here? What got me here? Um, how did I create Neurotas? Why me? Um, and how do we create the next generation entrepreneurs? And it's funny to, to think about that because I, I always, I'm always thinking about these things because I always get, you know, students or high school students or, or, or undergrads asking me, you know, what, what is the secret recipe? So I can't talk about character and I can't talk about genetics of myself. That's, that's separate. But what are the external factors that actually help me as an individual? And I think um, the, the one thing that I read recently that actually, you know, uh, 
resonated with me is that uh, this pitch book uh, piece of research that came out showing that Trinity in the last five years has been marked uh, or ranked as the best university in Europe in terms of producing undergraduate entrepreneurs. And that's really remarkable. Um, so what, what does that have to do with myself? Um, I realized then that uh, there was three things that actually got me to where I am today. And a lot of these things happened in Trinity. So one of these things, the first one, which I call um, basic or fundamental science. Now, this is not a scientific talk I'm going to give you. You can be uh, you know, um, working in arts, history, uh, geography, any area, but basic and fundamental way of looking at things is very, very important. I started with that from my pure maths background into my PhD in Trinity in molecular evolution. We were studying species that went extinct millions of years ago, hundreds of millions of years ago. So there was no um, application to that science currently, but it was fundamental because it explained how species lived hundreds of millions of years ago. It's seeing the big picture of why things exist, why they are the way they are. And I think that is important for anyone doing anything, whether you're in the arts industry, whether you're again in the history industry or whatever industry, starting off with a very important view of the world from a very big background, why is this important? Um, and, and looking at the fundamental links between different areas, I think is very important. That's how I started my career. And I think a lot of my thinking, my different thinking that I bring compared to other people I work with and I have worked with, is that fundamental science that I worked with, that theory that looking at the bigger picture and connecting things that people have not connected before. And I think what Trinity has really successfully done, I think um, uh, during my period, but specifically after as well, is that for every Trinity graduate, um, everyone now carries a piece of original research. That's important because I know the everyday thing is important, but when you carry a bit of research that's outside, that looks at the bigger picture, I think it's very important. And even if you don't see the importance there and then, you will see it years later. So I think that one first thing is basic, fundamental view of the world is very important. A lot of grants currently are focused on applied research, which is very interesting. But I think applied research is a uh, is short-term gain basic fundamental research is long-term gain, and I think we shouldn't lose it. So that's basic fundamental science is one. The second thing is applied science. After me looking at, and, and working in the fundamental science, I, I, was, um, I was approached by a consortium here in Ireland, and it was great, but also during my PhD, I worked with a few labs in the US. I was very lucky during, uh, again, my Trinity PhD that we had enough money to send me or the lab had enough money to send me in different labs in the US, and they had a more concrete, more, uh, they had a more applied, uh, some of the labs had a more applied uh, view of the world, so they were looking at my area and how can it be applied, for example, to ag uh, economic uh, structures. So for example, a lot of the species I was studying in my PhD uh, created a lot of uh, damage in ag, so billions of, 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 of material was, was, uh, had to be, uh, um, gotten rid of because we couldn't, they were, it wasn't consumable because these, these species were creating mycotoxins and toxins on these plants. Um, so I saw both areas in, in my PhD, so the very fundamental and the very applied. And then after my PhD, I got even more applied to a very industry-driven area, understanding what the industry needs specifically and trying to apply my own background to it. And I think that's a really interesting way. And it always goes, for me, it's very important to go from applied to, um, to more, or from very fundamental to applied. Very hard to go the opposite way. Um, so I think um, this applied science actually is more relevant to economic questions and industry. And I think every student has to do it, uh, whether you're, you're in fundamental or other areas. And again, this is not specific for science. It can be for arts, et cetera but going from a fundamental view to a very applied view. And then the third one is my academic and industry, um, our academic and industry coming together. And for this specific one, it didn't happen in Ireland for me. It happened in the US. Um, I, was, I was working in the US and I, I got approached uh, by a, an entrepreneurship school um, and they, they invited me to come to some of their, uh, their work and it was really incredible because it opened the door on understanding what it is, uh, what entrepreneurship is, 
also, what is working in industry? What, what is industry looking for from an academic perspective? And I think that was the missing thing um, in, in Europe in general, uh, in Ireland as well, is that link um, between academia and industry. Um, a lot of the guys I, I went to the, this entrepreneurship school um, came out saying, you know, my thing now is academia. I, I, I really now know that I want to stay in academia. Some of them came out saying, I absolutely want to be an entrepreneur like myself. And some of them came out saying, you know what, I want to work in industry. But at least it kind of gives you an idea of what it is out there. How does it look like? And I think Trinity has done really well recently as well in this area. Um, and I think um, just to, those three points of fundamental view of a problem and then a more specific view of the problem, followed by actually experience of knowing what industry is looking for and what entrepreneurship is about. Entrepreneurship is not easy. Um, it's, it's, uh, it's probably one of the hardest things because you're starting from scratch. Um, and you keep, you have to push against everything. It's usually you're bringing an innovative idea, so you really have to push against all the, all the um, uh, formalities and, and the status quo, and, and that's, that's not easy. Um, but I believe that the strategy that Trinity is proposing over the next five years actually really addresses those three issues. Um, and I can't wait to see the impact it has on the very lucky graduates that are going to come in uh, through the doors of Trinity. Thank you very much.